And so it served both as an audio cue and as a little, <laughs> you know, up the rebels. Um, and I said, why don't we base our score for V largely on Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? And, uh, and Joe thought, it was a great idea, and uh, he. We also ended up bringing in elements of, of Wagner. The, the the theme for Donovan bum, 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 is, if you think about it, is bum 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 bum. bum. It's the ride of the Valkyrie, right? <laughs> There was also a little bit of Bernard Herrmann, this uh, twelve-eight figure that dum da dum dum da dum 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 da dum. You know, that has a kind of a Tarantella feel to it, which I loved that feel because it had a sort of forwarding, you know, impetus to it. And and also I said I said to Joe, listen particularly in the Beethoven to the fourth movement, because that's where this miraculous theme is introduced, that I believe should be our theme for the for the the resistance. Uh, and I said, well, let's pick the moment where we introduce it carefully, because Joe and I were always very careful to make sure that the music came organically out of the piece, and uh, and it came it came at the very end of uh, of, of the first part of the uh, where uh, um, Ben uh, the the doctor has died and and had been shot and died in the car and his brother is crying over him and Faye Grant our leading lady has her head down with them and slowly she sort of raises her head up. And uh, because she has seen into the future, she has seen that she must find a way to beat and triumph over this, this dark force. And I said, that's the moment, Joe. And at that moment is where the French horn comes in with the solo statement of bam, 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 which is Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, Fourth Movement. <laughs> When I had been at, at CBS doing The Incredible Hulk uh, for Universal, the man who was the head of advertising and publicity uh, was a guy named Steve Somer, whom I banged heads with constantly because Steve just didn't seem to get what the Hulk was all about. He thought it was Green Monster on the loose, and I kept saying, no, no, it's about a man with a curse. It's about play, play up the fact that we have Bill Bixby doing the lead and all of this. And, and Steve kept taking Green Monster on the loose ads, you know. And, uh, and so it was, it was never a happy wedding at, uh, on the Hulk. All right, now, fade out, fade in, as we say in Hollywood. I'm now doing V, and we're, it's already been put together, and I've seen the finished product uh, so far, the rough cut. And, and Brandon called me and said, listen, I, I'm so excited. I just hired this great new guy to do the advertising and publicity for V. And I said, who? He said, Steve Sommer. I went, oh, <laughs> you know, OK. And, uh, and I, so I went into Steve's office and I said, look, you don't like me because you think I'm metal in what you do, okay? I said, I've got problems with you because I don't think you always get what I have given you and sell it in the best way you could. <clears throat> and I said, look, let me, uh, let me tell you what I have in mind for V. You can, you know, as, here's an idea. I said, Steve, have you ever seen the German propaganda posters that were up during World War II with the Wehrmacht soldiers with the little Dutch girls on their shoulders going, hi, we're here to be your friends. You know, friendship is universal. Uh, I said, um, what I would suggest is that we do posters like that, inspired by that, of V. Just put up posters that say, the alien visitors, your friend. Big spaceships in the background, arms around old folks, little girls on their shoulders, you know. Friendship is universal, all this sort of stuff. I said, don't say anything about the title of the show or the network. I said, just put up these propaganda posters in the subways in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Washington, all over the country. Put up billboards that do this. I said, the three weeks before it airs, just put up propaganda posters. I said, then two weeks before it airs, send out a crew of kids with cans of red spray, spray paint or paint and brushes and just do a big red V, write a graffiti, your own poster, you know, which is what the resistance did, of course, during World War II. That's where I came up with the idea for the title. I said, and then the third week, just before it airs, just put a little banner on the corner that says, uh, the battle begins on NBC, yada, yada, yada. And Steve, bless his heart, <laughs> came out of his chair, and he said, oh my God, that's a great idea, we're gonna do it. Je vais vous montrer. 
in North America, when it first aired, it had a 40 share, which was uh, the highest rated program NBC had had in two and a half years and continued to be the highest for several years after that. Uh, it is still the highest rated program. Um, it's, the, it's so, rating is so high that it's among the top 15 highest rated miniseries in all of television history and is the highest rated science fiction piece in history. 80 million people tuned in in North America and stayed. Nobody tuned out. Traditionally, the audience for science fiction is young males. Um, and my work from The Bionic Woman through The Incredible Hulk, through V, even in, in Alien Nation, has always been a much broader demographic than that. The, the largest audience for my work, oddly enough, is female. Uh, and it's not because I, I tried to set out to pander to a female audience, and I've often wondered, well, what causes that? Why does that happen? Uh, and it, it seems that it has to do with the fact, I guess, that I focus on relationship and character more than anything else. That, to me, is always the driving cornerstone of whatever I've done, in, uh, uh, all the way back th uh, from the Bionic Woman and the Hulk. I mean, for the Hulk, people would tune in, you know, the kids would tune in to see a big green guy crash through walls, okay? But very quickly, the audience realized, oh, wait a minute, there's something more going on here. There's, there's a little morality play going on here. This is really about a man who is cursed, you know. And the same thing happened with V uh, as happened with The Incredible Hulk. People saw that, that it was about something, that, uh, that there was a depth and a substance to it, uh, which is un was unusual in, uh, uh, in science fiction television.